Hey everybody, it's Tracy Hamlin inviting you to join us this Monday, February 21st. We'll be joined by multi-instrumentalist and songwriter Langston Hughes II. We'll also be joined by the fabulous Kendra Dion from 511, the new Black-owned wine label that caters to diverse palates. Write it down, take a picture, tell everybody you know to join us on Monday at 7 p.m. EST, The Tracy Hamlin Show, presented by our music channel on our TV network. Are you ready for the Tracy Hamlin Show? Tracy Hamlin Show. I am Tracy Hamlin, an international recording artist and jazz festival owner. I use music as a catalyst to give back to my community. And in the coming weeks, I have lots more to share about the Loudon Jazz Experience as well as my sweet jazz festival. My short song today is the title track from my very first CD, and it's called Season. I was so excited to pin the lyrics to that one and more to come. Um, as an independent recording artist, I have had the wonderful pleasure of performing around the globe and connecting with so many amazing people. And in, my, in those travels, um, I've met wonderful artists that some are household names, some are not, and some are not mainstream artists either, but it's people that you absolutely need to know about. This show will be a platform for quality talent that you need to know about as well as small businesses from my area that you absolutely need to check out. On today's show, I am delighted to have the fabulous Kendra Dion from 5011 Wines. But first we're gonna kick things off with multi-instrumentalist, composer, band leader, and Howard University student, Langston Hughes II. Hey, Langston Hughes II, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. 
Hey, How Tracy, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, you know what? I am flying high, flying high. Yeah. So I, when I tell you, I have to say, I am just so impressed with, with everything that I know about you being a, a college student and a recording artist, your talent and your work ethic and your professionalism is just far beyond your years. So the first question and the burning question that many people have asked, are you related to the legendary poet Langston Hughes? Yeah, that, that's, the, uh, that's the question right there. Um, so I'm not directly related. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's my dad's name, so I'm the second. It's my dad's name, and he was named after uh, Langston Hughes, the, the poet. However, I do think, um, at least in having the mindfulness of the name consistently and, and always being brought up, um, throughout the years of my life, I think we kind of developed some kind of connection. At least I did yeah. to him. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and I think, you know, all, he, he used his 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 writing um, and freedom to write uh, as mm -hmm. a way of expression. I think I do the same, but, but you know, on a different medium. You know on what I mean? On a different medium. Uh, and I think us sharing the same name allowed me to be more mindful of that consistently, you know. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So I know that you're a multi-instrumentalist. How many different instruments do you play and which ones? Uh, so, Lord, um, so I play all the saxophones. So that's uh -huh. the, you know, the alto, the tenor, soprano, and berry. Um, mm -hmm. And then I also play flute, and I'm working on clarinet now, although I don't totally claim it because it's still a work in progress. Um, and, you know, I can dabble on, on keyboard. You know, I can make sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can kind of track things, but uh, I'm by no means a keyboardist. So, and, you know, I, would, I, I usually just claim saxophone and flute for right now, and then I'm working mm -hmm. on clarinet. And, yeah, you know, we'll see what else happens. Yeah, the clarinet is difficult. I played the clarinet for three years. Super hard. I, I, I was kind of awful. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> but that's how I learned to read music. Right. But I mean, but I think all of the instruments are are hard because what people don't think about, mm -hmm. especially when you see an artist playing and reading music, they don't understand all of the different elements that have to happen instantaneously. Right. Like the time signature, mm -hmm. the um, the note values, yeah. and the, the key signature. So, I mean, it's it's quite amazing when you watch artists, whether they're reading music or not. Right, it, it's a lot that goes on that people don't think about. Yeah. So, as an artist, so I know that you're a student at Howard University. How are you able to balance school as well as being a recording artist? And I mean, I've seen you everywhere. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's 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 hard. Uh, it's super mm -hmm. hard. Um, school itself is almost like a full time, you know, kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I tell a lot of my friends uh, and and kind of younger people. You know, I'm already young, but even younger people who mm -hmm. kind of ask this question. Um, and I tell them it's almost like uh, you just gotta. I think the biggest thing is just sorting out your priorities and then figuring out exactly um, what do you think is the the most important thing at a given time, because uh, you're not always gonna be able to give 100% to every single thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But oftentimes you have to figure out at that time what's what what needs the 100% and what maybe needs the 80%. Um, mm -hmm. Because trying to get everything done 24 um, seven, you, you burn out and you'll burn out pretty fast. And I'm seeing a lot of folks kind of get burned out now, you know, with things opening back up and live performances and stuff coming back, but they're still mm -hmm. trying to keep up everything that they did when live performances weren't there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's really trying to, at least for me, is sorting out your priorities and figuring out uh, at what time uh, is is most, you know, at what at what one given time is 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 everything um, between everything what is most important and trying to focus on that mm -hmm. thing and you know still do your best on the other stuff. Well, you know, as I watched a lot of your videos, I noticed that you play with a lot of the musicians that I play with, like. Yeah. Aaron Hill yeah. and the in Phase Two, mm -hmm. and Gerald Beasley. When I was with Pieces of a Dream, he was the bass player. So oh, yeah, I yeah. thought, was, you know, I thought, oh my goodness. So the fact that you're hanging with those seasoned cats really speaks to your level of oh, talent. Yeah. And so when we we're actually going to go to a quick commercial break mm -hmm. because um, there's so much more I want to dig into. Yeah. So. During this commercial break, we're going to see some of your amazing video footage of you playing. Appreciate so it. we're going to take a short break. This is the Tracy Hamlin Show. We're chatting today with Langston Hughes II. We're going to take a pause for the cause, and we'll be right back. 
I used to watch BET, MTV, VH1. Now I watch Tempo, Soca, Calypso, Reggae, Dancehall. Don't stall, better get tuned in to the Tempo. Don't have cable, they got an app. Go to your app store, download that. Whether it's tourism, cuisine, or the social scenes, if it ain't Tempo, it's a wrap. Who got Caribbean views? Tempo. It's the latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You tryna cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. It's the latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You tryna cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Tracy Hamlin, and I'm so excited to share that I'm going to be coming your way every Monday night. 
for an entire hour to spotlight some phenomenal unsigned artists from around the globe, as well as some amazing small businesses from my area that you need to know about. I'm also gonna throw in a song or two. Yay! Something like that, a little something like that. Now, I'm gonna need you guys to tell all your friends, your cousins, your aunties, your bosses, come on in here and join us. We're gonna have so much fun. You don't want to miss this. I'll see you soon. Ooches of smooches. Tracy Hamlet Show. Tracy Hamlet Show. Are you ready? Welcome back to the Tracy Hamlin Show. We are having a great time with multi-instrumentalist, composer, band leader, and Howard University student, Langston Hughes II. So Langston, tell us about the time that you first became interested in picking up the saxophone. Ooh, yeah. Um, let's see, back when I was in fourth grade, so elementary school, uh, you, and I, I think that's kind of the average age. Um, mm -hmm. They typically go around to the to the students and ask if anyone wants to play an instrument. And you know, originally it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't nothing early on that that super inspired me to kind of pick up a saxophone. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it was really uh, I wanted something to do, something that was new, something that was different. Um, and playing an instrument seemed like the cool thing to do at the time. You know, it was like these these, right. these cool kind of saxophones and trombones and stuff. Um, <laughs> so I decided to play the, the saxophone simply because it it looked cool. Um, but at the time it was just something I did, you know, I just played the saxophone, but it wasn't until the high school years, uh, when I started to realize that the kind of opportunity that was there and the freedom that was there, um, and like the purpose, you know, that was there and, and the music kind of thing. Um, and at that time, uh, I started to really kind of take it seriously. It wasn't just something I did anymore. It was more so, um, a part of, of who I was. So, and that wasn't really until the high school years. And, and who were you listening to back then? Who some, who yeah. are some of your influences? Well, my main influences early on uh, was folks like Grover Washington Jr., mm -hmm. um, you know, Gerald Albright. Um, yeah. That kind of thing really got me interested in the sounds, you know, uh, mm -hmm. of jazz. And then after that, you know, more people got introduced and, and some people got taken away. But, you know, but yeah, the, mm -hmm. the Gerald Albright's and the, the Grover Washington Jr.'s and, and, and all those folks, yeah. really. Those are some amazing uh folks to want to follow in their footsteps. And Gerald Albright is a good friend of mine. Yeah. So Gerald is one of my favorite and um, a saxophone player, a player out of Atlanta, Kelly O'Neill. He plays with the Temptations, the OJs. He is also one of my favorites. And both of those um, gentlemen, if you have not already connected with them, I definitely want you to meet them because yeah, sure. I know they would be. Have you met Gerald before? Uh, so I haven't met him in person yet. I we we kind of talked online. I just got news, pretty cool that uh, I'll be doing the, the Lake Arbor Jazz Festival. Uh, on the, I'll be opening for uh, Gerald Albright on that on that particular date. So that's pretty. That is real. Congratulations! Oh, that is you. really really awesome. So yeah. the clip that I saw with you playing with Gerald Beasley, mm -hmm. that was Lake Ar um, Arbor Jazz Festival last year, correct? Yes, that was also Lake Arbor Jazz Festival last year. Yep. Awesome. Well, I need to definitely put that on my calendar so that I can be there because, again, I've been so impressed with with so much about you. So I see that you have you are now a um, doing a residence at the Strathmore in Maryland. Can you tell us about what what that means to um, be a, um, to have a residence? At yeah. A um, so I'm doing the, the Strathmore Artists in Residence program. Uh, like mm -hmm. you said, it's based in Maryland. So it's, essentially, it's a uh, it's in direct partnership with the Strathmore. Um, and they pick uh, they pick six musicians, uh, mm -hmm. and basically their their goal is to kind of feed into them. You know, they uh, they give them you know workshops and things like that. That's us all free. Uh, mm -hmm. They help them from everything from you know from taxes to 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 public speaking and doing these type of interviews, uh -huh. uh, all that type of stuff. But then they also give you some pretty cool shows um, at the Strathmore. So uh, mm -hmm. they give you three shows basically to. Uh, kind of demonstrate and and to kind of future you as an artist. So those are pretty cool, and especially because oh. they bring in a lot of their a lot of their pool and a lot of their following. 
and a lot of people are invested in the six oh, artists. We have a huge yeah. yeah, so it's it's been really cool getting to know a lot of different people who I haven't even you know a, a different a different type of people that I haven't you know reached at all. Um, so that's been super cool and I think super beneficial too. Um, yeah, that's what yeah. I love about the Strathmore. I mean, I know um, I know multiple artists who've been artists in residence there, and I know what it did for them. And I love that they almost have a built-in following. These folks. Right. They come because they know whether they they're familiar with the artist or not. They know it's going to be quality. Yeah. So I just think that is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, what is so t you released a single in 2021. Tell us about that single. Was that and was that your very first single? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, my very first recording project. Uh, nice. It was recorded uh, in the beginning of, you know, like you said, in 2021. So kind of the beginning stages of, uh, of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, the single is entitled Where From Here. Um, and essentially, uh, the song was created when I was basically making the decision to, to go into music um, in mm -hmm. college. It was a really kind of hectic time in life. I went to a STEM high school. Mm -hmm. um, so at first, my, my goal when I first got to high school was to do some, comp uh, some type of STEM field because, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's, you know, what's going to work. <laughs> um, and, you know, everyone, you know, says, oh, going to STEM, going to STEM, that's the future. Um, but then, you know, I soon realized after that, the STEM wasn't, it wasn't my future. <laughs> and, and, and I realized that I wanted to do music and it was something I thought that that's where my purpose was and that's where I can make the most impact. Um, so I decided to go to college for music, which for me, it may not seem like a big deal, but that was a really big deal. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure it absolutely was a big deal. What year are you in, in college? Uh, I'm a junior now at, okay. at Howard. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm a junior now at Howard. So at the time it was, a. Uh, it, it was almost my life was sitting around school, um, mm -hmm. sitting around, you know, things like like math and, and engineering. I had an internship that was pretty big. Um, I was going on a really good path. Uh, so when I made that, uh, basically that that choice to not do that, mm -hmm. um, you know, basically scrambled the puzzle pieces and I had to put it back together. And when I put it back together, um, I created that, uh, that, that song called Where From Here. Uh, yeah. That's kind of like a question, you know, where from here. Well, it is a beautiful work. And I mean, it sounds like you are doing a great job of figuring it out. And, you know, what I was thinking about when I was just listening to one of your songs is in this music industry, opportunities come when you least expect it. So you have to be ready. You can't, yeah. you know, be getting ready. Mm -hmm. And what I love about everything I've seen about you is that you are ready. You know, from people that I that I know that know you, they not only talk about your talent and what a great person you are, they talk about your work ethic. And I just want to encourage you to keep doing that because it's not often that talent meets preparation and work ethic. And, you know, so I really, really love that about you. So what is next for Langston? Uh, man, really is I I want to keep creating um, and, I, and I love the freedom that's that's in creating music you know there's there's not many things that that we can call you know freedom you know you have a you have a kind of set path you know a a, a kind of set time to eat all that things like that but i think music is one of the few things that you actually can have you know freedom in, in what you do um yeah. so i'm looking forward to that freedom you know i'm looking forward to you know keep doing the best i can day by day practicing when i when i can um, mm -hmm. going after each opportunity that I can. Um, and I look forward to, to where that takes me. So, um, yeah, just going to keep trying, uh, uh, one foot in front of another and, you know, looking forward well, to yeah. just that journey. Just keep doing what you're doing because you're doing an amazing job. Are there, is there anybody you'd like to collaborate with? Oh, let's see. Um, you know, uh, 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 bunch of people um there's a lot of uh uh vocalists that i want to work with i want to work with you one day <laughs> um uh, yeah for sure it, it, it just, yeah for sure <laughs> um and, and just all kind of folks i, I think i want to get a chance to to work with uh at least everybody um kind of in this area at least wants to see um you know mm -hmm. who's the best fit uh and and to kind of yeah. go from there yeah, it's so much great talent in this area. So um, before we yeah. leave, the, the amazing thing about this show, time flies when you're having fun. Can you tell people how to stay connected with you? Your social yeah. media, your website. So it's super easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, you if you look me up, uh, pretty much every I was lucky to, to get this on pretty much all social media platforms. But if you just look up Langston Hughes the second with two eyes representing the second, mm -hmm. um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, the Facebook, um, my website is Langston Hughes the second, so you can find me on there too. Okay. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I love to stay connected with everyone here. Yeah, so guys, go check him out, follow him on Instagram, Facebook, check out his website, Langston Hughes the second. He's doing some amazing, amazing things, and I'm going to be calling you for some things as well. So check him out, Langston. Thank you so much for joining us today. I wish you nothing but the best, and I will definitely be following your journey and staying connected. So thank you so much. We'll be right back with Kendra Dion from 5011 Wines. I appreciate it. See you later.
And we're back. I'm always jamming to the music from commercial, so forgive me. Welcome back to the Tracy Hamlin Show. That Langston Hughes II, he is such an impressive young man. Our next guest hails from Richmond, Virginia, but now resides in D.C.'s wine country. And she is the only Black female winemaker in Loudoun County, Virginia. Her collection is called 511 Wines. Hello and welcome, Kendra. All right, she started already. Hello. Girl, you caught me sipping. Hey, girl, how you doing? I am good. How are you? I am amazing now. I got my Dolce Zaya swirling in my glass. Get I know it. that. Right. So get into it. <laughs> See, that's some good stuff right there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank oh you for having goodness. me. I can't wait to do a deep dive into your amazing, amazing wines. I mean, I've been apps. It just satisf satisfies my palate. Oh, so can you tell our viewers, what was your pathway into winemaking? How did working. this come about for you? Working was my pathway into winemaking. I am a developer at heart. I do everything from workforce development to business development and everything in between. And it was that relationship, that connection that led me to serving the agricultural and rural communities in Loudoun County. Um, and through that process, I met an incredible winemaker and local farmer, um, an incredible giver and server in Doug Fabioli. And um, Doug and I had many conversations that led me to this place where I'm at right now in my career. And I am so grateful um, for him believing in me when I didn't even believe in myself in there being a space for me in this industry. So that yep. was my, my entry point. That is awesome. Sometimes you need that push. Sometimes I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like I find out more about me from folks that watch me. You yeah. know, my husband, my husband and my close friends, they, you know, they will plant seeds. And I, then I think, if you think I can do this, maybe I can. And then I'm off and running. Yes. So 511. I mean, when I think of 511, I think about my mother saying, Tracy, I told you to do such and such 511 times. What is your problem? <laughs> So tell us about the name 511. What was the inspiration? Girl, the inspiration was simple. I got 511 things going on. I run 511 businesses. I serve on 511 committees. I got 511. Right. No, 511 was inspired by my desire to introduce something new and different to the community of diverse consumers, those underserved consumers in the wine market space. Mm -hmm. um, we have a tendency to go to restaurants and order the exact same things. Most of the time, if you're not into wines, if you're very new to wines, your mm -hmm. wine selection tends to be influenced by pop culture, what's popular, what's in the latest songs, what's yeah. featured on the latest shows. I remember I went through my cosmopolitan stage and that was inspired by the ladies of Sex in the City, right? Let's be real. You know, so we have our influences that drive Absolutely. us to make our selections. I wanted to introduce 511 new types of wines to a diverse consumer market to help folks explore their palates based on the mm -hmm. foods that they choose to eat. So in our collection, we have titles, we have varietals and blends that most people are not accustomed to going into their local wine shop and just grabbing off the shelf. So I wanted people to know that there are 511 things on the shelf. Why are we sticking to the same Malbec, Moscato and Rosé? Come on, people, we can no. do better. But it's so it's so much true to what you said about folks can easily be inspired by what's in their face. Like when I used to watch Scandal, you know, I was drinking any kind of red wine in a and big popcorn. red glass. Exactly. Because that's what Olivia Pope did. So, yeah. yeah. So so with your wines, first of all, can you tell us again what you're drinking? It looks amazing. Oh, honey, oh, this is my favorite. At the end of the day, you just get your swirl on and your sip on. This is my Dolce Zaya. So the Dolce Zaya mm -hmm. is made with a Virginia Chamberson grape. Um, with this wine, I wanted to elevate the experience a little bit to make it something that was more compatible with a lot of the foods that I eat after a long day. Being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur is no joke. 511 mm -hmm. is not the only thing that I do. I also do business consulting. So when I get home at the end of the day, I don't always have time to cook. I'm getting Thai food from Taipan, my local gas station Thai. Hello, it's the best Thai food in town. You know what I'm talking about, Tracy. Yes, you know, absolutely. 
I love Solo's Pizza. I love, you know, I mean, it's just so many different places that I go and grab a quick bite from when I'm on the go. And when I get home, I want a nice glass of wine. So I love this slightly sweetened Virginia Chamberson wine. It is amazing. I get cherry notes from it. I get all the things that complement those savory flavors in my favorite pizza and all the stuff that I'm going to eat on a regular weeknight. This right. is what I'm sipping on. And today was a really long day. I so I said, you, I diet is it. <laughs> so I hear you talking about specific ingredients. So you're creating the recipes, correct? Yes, I'm working with um, Doug Fabioli, who okay. is mentoring me in all parts of this winemaking process and journey. And I'm learning so much under his guidance on how to make a, a blend that fits the type of food. Like I'll mm -hmm. describe it in my my novice, my very novice way, right? I have no formal background or training or degree or credential in anything related to wine. Um, my background is in business and psychology. That's the mm -hmm. school that I'm coming from. So when we have conversations, it's very chill. It's very mm -hmm. casual. There's no sommelier. There's no pretentiousness coming on in the conversation. Like our noses are not in the air and neither are pinkies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we're just talking to each other like two real people and right. we're coming from different worlds but we understand each other around this thing called wine so mm -hmm. i describe to him what i want to feel and experience on my palate when i'm having foods that i typically enjoy because mm -hmm. i don't know about you tracy but i'm not eating cheese and crackers for dinner unless them invoices didn't hit right you know, those paychecks didn't come in that's the only time you'll see me eat cheese and crackers for dinner right, right. well see so you know what what i love about your wines is that i don't need fruit or chocolate or anything to pair with it for it to satisfy my palate. Exactly. Just keeping it straight is absolutely amazing. So with that in mind, I want everybody watching, stop and go to 511collection.com. And she has single bottles. She, you can buy the bundle. The red is amazing. The white is amazing. Support small businesses, folks. Go get some wine. Go get some wine. <laughs> Listen, I love the plug. Can I hire you, girlfriend? I need you. Yes. Yes, we do. You know, it's so interesting when you were talking about just entrepreneurship. I mean, I always tell folks that when I didn't get a record deal, I started my own label. When I yes. did gigs, I became a promoter. And when I didn't get booked for festivals, I started my own. So again, and I, I said this last week when we were talking to a small business owner, you have to be willing to invest in yourself and you have to be willing to take the risk and step out on faith. You know what I mean? Because opportunity is not going to personally come knock at your door. That's it. I don't I don't wait for a seat at the table. I buy the farm and I cut down the trees and I teach other people how to build it. Hello. What she said. That's what I do. Okay. That's we what need, I do. We need to print that and just put it everywhere, get it on a t-shirt, because folks really need that inspiration. You know, yeah. last week we were talking about before the pandemic a side hustle, and, and this is no way a side hustle, but <clears throat> just the, a side hustle was a luxury. Now it's a necessity. And I'm seeing more and more people just step out on faith and they're being very successful like you are with being their own bosses and creating their own destiny. So kudos to you. Thank you, girl. You know, you're you're absolutely right. In my consulting work, one of the things that I tell my clients all the time, whether they're a mid-sized to large government contracting concern or a small business or a entrepreneur just getting started, mm -hmm. I always encourage people to go back to their purpose and identify 51 revenue generating ideas that they can do with what they already have. No new equipment, no new staff, no new facilities. Reimagine what you have and try to come up with new ways. I tell my daughter the same thing. There are no problems in this world. There are 50 11 new solutions and new pathways to get there. And that's one of the things that this brand stands on is the 50 11 opportunities that we all have to chart our own path, to create our own course. We don't have to wait for doors to open, but what we need to do is we learn how to plot out the frames and get to building. We need to be building doors and cutting holes and walls where yes. people put those walls up. We don't have to live within those limits. Get a saw, get a Absolutely. drill, get a butter knife if you must. A but there are 50, 11 opportunities if you're willing to go after them. That's Listen, the difference. The owner of 50, 11 Wine, she is bringing the solutions today. I mean, this is so inspiring. I know you've touched the hearts and ears of tons of folks. So 
We need to take a quick break, but we're going to come right back and talk about an upcoming event this weekend with 511 Wine. So don't go away. The Tracy Hamlin Show will be right back with Kendra Dion and 511 Wine. Cheers. I'm Charles Meriday, and I'm in the restaurant business. In my 20 years as a chef and restaurant owner, I've been able to work and eat in some of the great kitchens around the globe. There's a whole side of the restaurant that most people will never get to see. So now, I want to take you to the back of the house, into kitchens of some of the best chefs in the world. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and recipes, so you can cook like a pro too. So join me in the back of the house for a whole new perspective on cooking and food. Service, please. I'm glad that you came, but please. Time. It has a different meaning in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It goes backwards, forwards, it stops. St. Croix is rooted in history. So much of it still remains untouched. I remember running on these streets as a kid. This trap was right down there. It opened the same year I was born. This is where the original Crucian hook was born. It's the symbol of these islands. And I wanted to have my hands in that very same history. I want to be able to pass it down to my family while still putting a new spin on it. The U.S. Virgin Islands, we have an amazing culture that developed over time from all over the world. St. John feels so untouched. Being underwater is like another world. There's no worries, there's no stress. I can just escape. This is my happy place. My passion for scuba diving came at just being fascinated with the water and wanting to be a mermaid. And this is the closest thing I can get to achieving mermaid status. <laughs> Canadians just love being outdoorsy. We live for adventure, so we love anything hiking, being on the water, diving, snorkeling, and St. John has it all. It's like some spirit is protecting the island and keeping them raw. The Makujumbi watches over the island. From up there, they keep the evil spirits away. The nightlife in St. Thomas is absolutely amazing. There's always something going on. Everyone comes together to dance and catch a vibe. We're always celebrating. We celebrate freedom, culture, the food, the smell, the music. It's always a celebration. The people here are probably the most priceless thing because they keep the culture going. There's so many different influences on these islands. Food from all kinds of countries coming together in new dishes. <laughs> All of us came from somewhere, but all of we call this home. The VI is a new melting pot. This is where the past and the future comes together.
we are hanging out with Kendra Dion, the fabulous wine maker and owner of 511 Wine. Kendra, look at that. Oh my goodness. It just looks amazing. And I know that it is amazing. So question for you, you yes. have a wine club. Can you tell us about your wine club? I do. I am in love with our new wine club. The support has been just incredible, overwhelming from our community. Um, the wine club is a quarterly distribution wine club where you get three bottles of wine in every distribution. You get the perks and benefits of 15% off all purchases in between the distributions. We work with a ton of amazing small businesses like a wine and paint bar in Dumfries, Virginia, um, a variety of caterers, handmade jewelry artisans, and other people who are offering special incentives for our wine club. We also are doing a variety of chef prepared dinners exclusively for our wine club members. So there's a lot of great perks to being in the wine club. And if you're interested, um, all you have to do is go to 511collection.com and apply on our wine club application page. Yes. And you know, what's interesting, and this is just a little plug because people are always saying, Tracy, you have everything. What should we get you? 511 wine collection. Listen, I got bottles on top of bottles on top of bottles. What you need, girl? I got you. Now, this weekend, tell us about the event that is coming up this weekend at the Salamander uh, and your partner yes. with them. I am so excited about the opportunity. So I was contacted by um, Chef Pete, who is the executive chef at Market Salamander, about mm -hmm. doing a six-course paired wine dinner there at the market. Um, and when he first approached me, I immediately went into fangirl mode because I am a huge Sheila Johnson fan. I love everything about that woman. And all I heard was salamander. And I was like, yes. I didn't even know what the invitation was. <laughs> um, but I got to meet with Chef Pete and um, one of his amazing team members, Jack. And um, we sat and I poured wine for them. And mm -hmm. they it was almost instant. They were like, we got to do a dinner around this. This collection is awesome. Mm -hmm. So they paired this, this um, six course meal for the wine. And mm -hmm. um, we put the tickets out there and within a blink of an eye, those tickets were oh sold out goodness. for the first night. Um, and it was so successful that we had so many people on the waiting list that they decided to add a second night. So um, this Saturday, the 26th and Sunday, the 27th, we are having not one, but two sold out wine dinners. And I am, I just, mm. I'm overwhelmed with not only humility, and gratitude, but just thankfulness. Like he asked me, do you want a table? Do you want to sit down and eat? And I said, Chef Pete, I don't think I can eat. I'm going to be so excited to be there because this is Tracy. I don't think people understand. Like if you know me and my personality, I am a behind the scenes, back of the house type of girl. Like I help other people shine. So for me, tears roll up in my in my eyes you know i'm one of those people where i i have a deep spiritual connection on top of everything else i do yes i'm saved and i drink wine i haven't right. seen a miracle that jesus performed didn't involve wine i'm just saying hello right well I, i'm one of those people where i'm like I, I don't know what it takes for you but for me all it takes is a flashback to right. my past and where i've come from to this point and mm -hmm. to have someone like Sheila Johnson or anybody affiliated with her business to see me, have you even, yeah. world-renowned singer, amazing musician, just an incredible oh. talent to, to actually see me as a human, as a person, and as an entrepreneur. It means everything to me. So I am yeah. beyond humbled and grateful to be able to pour for the guest of Salamander this weekend. Um, it is yeah. it's truly great. Wonderful. And, and you know, anything at the salamander equates to an experience. Yes. You're not going for a glass of wine. You're not just going for dinner. It is an experience. So hubby and I are super excited that we will be there Saturday night. Yes. So I just cannot wait because I'd love to support. And I mean, I just adore you and everything that you stand for. And it's been amazing to just watch your journey and see all of the support that you have. And it's so well-deserved. 
Thank you. No, Thank it's you so much. much. So, and for anybody who doesn't know what the salamander is, you guys need to know who Sheila Johnson is and what the salamander is and what it stands for. So to pair the salamander, you know, to combine that with Kendra Dion and 511 Wines, yes. I mean, I'm super stoked about this amazing experience that we're going to have on Saturday night. Thank you so much. It, it means the world to me. And to know that you're going to be there, oh my gosh. Yes. And I, I'm going to be styled by um, Shell's Boutique out of Tyson's Corner Mall. So oh, I have yes. a black designer who designed my outfit for yes. tonight. I'm wearing earrings and jewelry by local black designers. Um, my hair and makeup will be done by black artists. I am featuring a local black photographer. Like we're going to be black, black, black on black on black. That okay, day, so I need to record my show from there because every yes. you know you're describing the epitome of what the show stands for on all these small business owners. So yes, I, oh I believe that a rising tide raises all ships, and I tell my people all the time: when I come up, we coming up together. So all the merchants from from. Um, Nikki at Eclectically Simple Jewelry Designs to Nicole at So Cold Creations to the Deckers at D3D. I mean, you name it, everybody in between. If I've ever worked with them, if I've ever coached them or guided them, you better believe when I come up, they're coming up with me. We coming together. Absolutely. And you know, you said you have 50 11 jobs and yeah. that you serve on. You need to also add to that, uh, you need to write a book of Kendraisms for all of the amazing. <laughs> sayings that you dropped for us here today. <laughs> Well, I did write one book. It's called Conquering the Emotional Roller Coaster of Entrepreneurship. It's available on Amazon and on KendraDion.com. But I did write a book um, and I actually wrote it during the pandemic while sick, not with COVID, but while really sick mm -hmm. and launching a wine business at the same time, preparing to send a child off to college. I know I look like I'm in college myself, but I do have a baby in college. 511, it's just so fitting. You know, because of all that is on your plate. So uh, another question for you, because when we're, out, when we're out drinking wine, we just know that it comes in a glass to the table. We don't think about what happened before it the glass got to our table. What is the process? Oh, I mean, it, it must be a lot, but just in a nutshell, what, what does that involve? Is that ah. something that you can describe in a nutshell? I can. It involves running from bees. <laughs> and all the creepy creatures that crawl throughout a vineyard, it, it involves right. that, right? And then you have to make a decision. Like, you know how they say a decision has been made? Right. It's either the bee or it's my money. So that bee going to have to take a back seat. Hello, somebody. So you get your shears, you cut those grapes, right? And then we take them through a process of um, sorting and, and package them and going through the pressing, the crushing process. T.D. Jakes wrote a book called Crushing. Oh, my God. You learn more about winemaking in that book. Between winemaking and Jesus, that book is amazing. I'm just saying. Um, but it, there's a crushing and a pressing process that the grapes have to go through before they get to the point of fermentation. Um, and without being scientific, I'm going to take it deep. That crushing and that pressing process is something that entrepreneurs go ship, go through all the time, right? It is so fitting. We are ripe. Our vines are ripe and overflowing with amazing fruit. That's our capabilities. That's our possibilities. Mm -hmm. But at some point, in order for us to continue to flourish and thrive, we have to be pruned. So in that pruning process, we get snipped. But something happens with our gift. And that's that development, that cultivation process that the wine, that the grape goes through before it becomes wine. So for all of my entrepreneurs and all of my business people that are tuned in and all of the entrepreneurs, wow. yes, this segment is about wine. And yes, this segment is about grape. But just know when you are in a dark place, you're not in a place of death. Mm -hmm. You're in a place of development. You're in a place of transformation because that's exactly what that grape goes through in its evolution of going from fruit on a vine to something mm -hmm. divine in the glass. I'm just okay. saying. Okay. You just dropped a mouthful of knowledge. Bless you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody, Kendra Dion, 5011 Wines. Go to 5011collection.com get her wines, follow her on social media. Thank you so much for being here, Kendra. I wish you nothing but much success. And again, time flies when you're having fun. So this is Dorothy Marie Hamlin's baby girl, Tracy Hamlin, signing off.
Thank you, Langston Hughes II. Thank you so much, Kendra Dion. And we will see you all next week. Thank you for joining and ooches of smooches. See you next week. Hey everybody, I'm Tracy Hamlin and I'm so excited to share that I'm gonna be coming your way every Monday night for an entire hour to spotlight some phenomenal unsigned artists from around the globe, as well as some amazing small businesses from my area that you need to know about. I'm also gonna throw in a song or two. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, a little something like that. Now, I'm gonna need you guys to tell all your friends, your cousins, your aunties, your bosses, come on in here and join us. We're gonna have so much fun. You don't want to miss this. I'll see you soon. Ooches of smooches. Tracy Hamlet Show.